artist, you see them on MTV, whatever, you get their CD, you listen to their CD, you memorize their CD, you go to their concert and you go, yeah, and you go, that was great. That is so boring. Go to an all night event that is in a different location every time that, you know, they're are crazy lights and mass numbers of people and two turntables and a DJ and everybody is a participant and they all make up the energy that becomes the party. Thousands of kids come out, they dress a certain way and they empower themselves in certain ways and it's not about rock and roll. What we do is much more about being there, feeling people's vibe, feeling the energy and sharing that with people. Like crazy intense like explosive feeling that you can only get from this like combination of, of music and a dance floor. It's about dancing first and foremost and it's about bringing people together and it's about you know creating this instant feeling, this oblivion, this like particular one night oblivion where nothing else outside that room matters. I went to this one club one night, NASA, and it was just a totally different sound. It was like everything that everybody was listening to, like all the drums were like in the treble range, was like Like the bass was like one sine wave and it didn't break, the bass didn't go like boom, 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 we're like ooh. Such a new sound that I was like, oh my god, this is it. thing about the rave scene is that it's not about what I do it's about the whole culture as a whole so basically I play my part in playing the records for the people this is my life I wake up in the morning I eat I sleep I shit techno house the culture whatever it is but I never shut it off for five minutes <laughs> My father was murdered in 1985, so he drove a cab and he got, you know, he got shot behind the wheel. I think that's another reason why um, my passion for music was even stronger because he was my main inspiration. I always explain it like in the movie Saturday Night Fever, he he crosses the Brooklyn Bridge, gets into Manhattan, and the movie's over. Well, you know, I kind of did the same thing. We have the store here in Manhattan, but I don't know. It's not a movie to me. It's just everyday life. The lighting is coordinated with the music, you know. The DJ knows what he's doing. Everybody's in the in the same spirit. Um, then you know it's a slamming party, and that's like very very hard to have all those elements together. An essential essential rave party things that you might want are first of all water. You want to wear something that you don't need to hold on to, so you're free to dance. Backpacks work really well. It's convenient. Um, wear comfy clothes so that you can get dirty and feel comfortable to dance and sweat. Now. Love up and you want to bring enough to share with all your friends and for all the new people you're going to meet. One time we brought flashing rings and everybody warm so we can find each other in the dark. 
You're not gonna want to leave without your sunglasses because in the morning when you come out, it's gonna be daylight and you're not gonna look pretty. Now. first went to my first rave uh, you noticed this uh, mishmash of people different uh, people from different areas of, of the Bay Area um, different colors different you know people all getting down to the same beat and to me that was the most profound profoundly inspirational thing I'd seen I actually I was really funny about I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to put up with that techno stuff for a whole night yeah. And then I went and it's totally different. I know so many people who say they hate techno and I've taken them to parties and they've come back and been like, you know, you can kind of kind of groove to that stuff. I just thought, like, just who are these idiots? Like, I just saw all these, like, lycra sock caps and just, like, goofy oversized pants. I was just like, this is disgusting. And then, like, a year later, I heard Derek Carter on three turntables. And um, that just blew my mind. I never thought it was like what it was. You know what I mean? I thought it was just like a club type scene with like people wearing shiny clothes. That's all I knew about it. But I was wrong. I would hope that I wouldn't find my daughter or her friends in a place like this. Mm, you know. <laughs> Didn't know what to expect, but uh, they were very well behaved. We had no problems whatsoever. It's probably like ideally, when I think of the best, like most amazing time I could possibly have, I think of all the influences like music, people, energy, good lighting, big place, and it's all here. The fact of this music is that if you're in touch with the subtlety of what it offers, then it's empowering to you as an individual, no matter who you are. And that power is spread across the, the grounds of a rave. <sighs> it's, uh, it's an intensity that you can't feel anywhere else. What do you think about the raves? Kind of, I'm impressed. I mean, what do you it's like something it? new, and you get into the music. You do get into it. Why do you think that is? Beat, the lights, I don't know. that we could illegally convert into a studio. We needed noise cover, right? So right in our backyard is the 210 freeway. So when we're playing music like really, really loud, 3 o'clock in the morning, you can't tell. Is that kick drum or is that the diesel that just went by, you know? We were inspired by the whole, uh, the, the energy that, the positive energy that, came from these parties and, and that 
no matter if you were black, white, Hispanic, Asian, you, everybody got together and everybody had a good time. This is what we pulled up from uh, the bomb shelter out in our front yard and uh, it's a family radiation detector kit and uh, this is called a dosimeter. How badly you've been dosed with, <laughs> with radiation. <laughs> My interpretation of Acid House was to take that further and make it psychedelic and celebratory and, and positive beyond just music. I just had this feeling that there was something, some kind of ritual trance music that could be long time based and ecstatic. On Sunday, August the 10th, 1986, we were in Chicago and I was doing a radio show. And so I basically got them to wire all the different separate rooms in the college radio together so I could use all the turntables, all the cassette players and all the microphones. And while we were doing that, uh, this young enthusiastic black guy called Derek Carter turned up. He said, oh, you've got to go to this shop. I know this shop, you're going to love it. And Derek May was um, playing, spinning on two turntables while he was also the checkout guy. He said, what are you looking for? I said, well, I want the weirdest that you've got, the stuff that you can't cope with. I'm only interested in something that's so strange right now that none of us quite get it. And he said, oh, okay, you want the acid stuff. And over in this little rack were about four 12-inch white labels. And then I put them in a bag, and when I went back to England, I put them on. What I heard immediately was just that the rhythm, that speed, was the missing, kick, the missing link to me. I went, oh, okay, that's it. It's not psychedelic enough for my taste, but the way that, it, that this, this kind of hypnotic beat, this simplified beat, that's it. That's what we need. And that's the same speed as the trance music all over the world. It just all went together like that. It was like all the really product ripoffy stuff that was really popular because I mean, so much of sort of like the culture at the time was, to, I mean, it's like influenced by like the whole idea of like sampling. You know, we were sampling, you know, visuals and making them our own. This whole business, this was like a Bazooka Joe comic, right? And we like scanned it in and we just changed the bubbles. So it was really cool. And then we put this NASA thing here because we made it look like a club because it's like this moon base on the moon but now it's our club because it's NASA. Ray Bazaar walking advertisement for bottled water. So why not do, you know, bottled water? So a lot of the things that we were doing were almost like hyping the products that we use in our everyday life as well, like things that were like, that meant something to us. If you take something like a, a corporate logo or you take a piece of, of commercial art or television and then you cut it up and reassemble it, in a very real way, you're also emasculating its power over you. I've completely, you know, gotten inspired from old video game packaging, just like the cheesiness of it or the the pseudo high techness of it, you know, of like old Atari games, and like Missile Command, and the typefaces they use, and the and the ideas for the the way that the interface of the game looks. Mm -hmm. 